Well, giving 100% always the key for Nelly Korda. She will attempt to do so as she begins her first round at the U.S. Women's Open at 8.13 a.m. Eastern Time alongside Nasa Hataoka and her good friend, Megan Kang. Well, guys, there was a, a lot to unpack there in everything that Nelly said. Uh, of course, she has that very strong sense of self, and I think that's something that's really helped her this year and that she mentioned in her comments there is this strong community she's built around herself, the bubble, as you like to call it, Beth Ann, and that bubble has very much changed. Uh, what, what has led to that bubble creating such positive changes for Nelly Corda in her game? Well, I definitely think, as she mentioned, having her instructors out week to week has been huge. And that's really a luxury on this tour to, to, to one, be able to afford that, and then, two, have them available. But I also think, and I, I don't want this to sound negative at all, because this is coming from a good place. Nelly Corda would not be Nelly Corda without her big sister, Jessica Corda, and she would not be where she is today, probably without that inspiration of her best friend. But in having a conversation with Stacey Lewis a little bit earlier in the year about this incredible run that Nellie Corda is on, she mentioned that she felt like it was, you know, a good thing that Nellie had an opportunity to be herself a little bit as, as Jessica was taking a break with her back injury and then, and then now a mother on maternity leave, that this was an opportunity for, for Nellie to set her own schedule, to do everything the way she wants to do it that's fit best for her. And I think, you know, it's, that's a natural progression of, of, of someone sort of fleeing the nest, shall we say, that she, her identity is not just Jess Corda's little sister out here anymore. And I know, Mel, you have a, a much better understanding of, of what that's like behind the scenes here with, with these two players. Yeah, I mean, her and Jess, I think Jess was an incredible big sister for her when she first came out. She was that stability, that home comfort. They used to stay together. They would play practice rounds together. They would even practice next to each other pretty much every session. Um, they'd eat dinner together. And so that was her stability out here. And I think, like you said, Jess leaving, you know, she's in a different part of her life now, welcoming a beautiful baby boy, Grayson. I think that it's kind of made Nelly create a name for herself and create her own identity. And as she said there in the press conference, I think it's the most comfortable and confident uh, that I've seen her in her own skin. And I think that's what's elevated this absolute superstar that she's become. You know, we always said that years ago when Nelly first came out, we said if you could put Nelly's talent with Jess's mentality, you would have the perfect player. <laughs> and for some reason, it's happened. Like, I think Jess has had that sort of impact. And, you know, full credit to Jess, just being the ultimate big sister and selfish, you know, not being selfish at all and, and you know, trying to compete against her sister in a way, um, you know, letting her kind of take the show for a little bit, I think, is very admirable from Jess. And... She's now the perfect player. I do think that she's got Jess's mentality now, and she's just unstoppable. And I think there is a lot to what you said about uh, having her coach out, Jamie Mulligan. Uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Jamie Mulligan and watching his players play. He, he's a teacher that can get granular, but he more often gets holistic. And he doesn't just talk about golf. He talks about life. And he talks about how to put yourself in the best possible frame of mind to go out and play your best golf. Uh, and so I do love that about Jamie Mulligan. He can get as technical as you want him to get, but... He doesn't do that often with his players, and they play with a great freedom. Uh, but as it relates to Nelly, specifically at U.S. Opens, uh, you know, she's played in nine of them. She's had uh, a couple of top tens. Her best finish is, is eighth. Uh, and, and it, you know, when you look at what she's done in the U.S. Opens, she's got herself in trouble, and she hasn't done a really good job uh, the three, four, five, six times she gets in big <laughs> trouble of getting herself out of trouble. Uh, in those nine U.S. Opens, she's almost averaged three double bogeys or higher per championship. Whereas if you go back to 2000, you look at all the players that have won the U.S. Uh, Women's Open, they've averaged less than one. So they're getting in trouble. They're getting out of trouble. And, you know, like you look at the fourth hole here, the fifth hole here, Creek meanders in front. The cost of hitting in the rough in 2015 was almost three-quarters of a shot at four, almost a half a shot at five. Situations like that. You get in the rough. You got to get it out. You got to get back and play. Take your bogey. To your point earlier, Mel, you were talking about that at the top of the show. So uh, as we look at Nellie Corda and this week, when she does get in trouble, it's very important for her to get back out there because she has so many skills and so many places that she can get an advantage on everybody else. When she's in an inopportune place, get back and play, make your bogey, move on.